but how you know with your study decisions and to those early career decisions how did that actually end up to where you are today yeah it is a little bit of a journey and i think that everybody's sort of career journey starts off in one place and ends up um somewhere different but um i did go to school and i was trained um in graphic design but with a lens on digital um so i had some certification in digital um and early on i had an opportunity to work for a company that was privately owned it was in the health and beauty space um and as their designer there um i you know after a couple of years became their creative director and being a privately run company it's really all hands on deck and you pitch in and everybody contributes and and does what they need to do to you know grow and and make the business successful um so i had the opportunity to you know explore a lot of different paths that were just outside of sort of the graphic design and the packaging that i was doing um and one of those was um we launched a brand at the time called live clean and um getting it online and finding new ways to reach people with the brand outside of traditional media um so you know that was in early really early days of social media and you know the emergence of sort of online retailers as well um so you know i got to have the experience of you know starting a brand um advertising on those different platforms like social media and things like that and finding ways to get exposure um for the brand on platforms that didn't exist and at the time were much more cost effective than going down like the traditional path of you know TV and print magazine and things like that um and then also partnering with retailers as they were like expanding and exploring sort of the retail online space for them and what that looked like um and being able to like build those partnerships there um so that was sort of my introduction and it was just out of you know necessity and need and that like willingness to like grow and expand um and enter into sort of like the digital marketing and e-commerce space that way do you think that your design side of things still helps today and do you actually and i say helps or do you still use it today um and i'll ask the second question off the off okay that. actually yeah i think i have a different lens on things that most traditional marketers don't have because i always have the lens of like a designer and like am able to relate that to like what the consumer is experiencing when they like engage with a brand engage with media what that looks like for them um whereas i find sometimes in traditional marketing backgrounds it's so focused on you know the messaging of the brand what the key points are supposed to be that the consumer's getting away whereas i have that flip side of the lens i'm like what is visually working for them appealing how is the messaging getting through you know what i mean what's really important mm -hmm. and what can they take away from what they're visually looking at you said at the beginning you know when you were things were just moving on to social you said that at the time when you were speaking about advertising on social media platforms and different platforms you said at the time so obviously the cost of advertising on these platforms has gone up a lot are you seeing anywhere that's being that you're seeing that may be a bit underutilized at the moment yeah i think that there's lots of in terms of social specifically i think that people generally you know get pulled towards like facebook and instagram and i think there's a lot of knowledge there and understanding and like the data and analytics are really mature on those platforms too um i think depending on target audiences and demographics there's like a lot of space on other channels to you know perform really well and be really successful i think you know lots of opportunity right now on tiktok um as an emerging you know advertising channel and i think you know there's still a lot of space in facebook and instagram and a lot that can be done there i think it comes down to target audience um mm -hmm. and i was recently in a role um in sort of the controlled substance space um as we had cannabis legalized in Canada and so working on some like advertising and stuff there where a lot of the platforms are really restricted and um we were able to come up with media plans on sort of different channels Snapchat was like a really great platform for us because they allowed cannabis and i think you know 
that gave me the ability to push out of the things that I generally knew and went towards and like work on a different platform that was really successful and had a really lot to offer. What career mistake, and it doesn't need to be the largest one, what career mistake has been a big lesson for you? That's a good question. I don't know um, about mistakes so much because everything's like really a journey, but I think early on in my career, and like, I think this would be, you know, a big point of advice that I would give to anyone is ask questions more to sort of like the senior leadership and push what's like traditionally being done. You know, if you know of new opportunities and you're seeing ways of growing the business, I wish I had done that sooner because I I got to, you know, the path that I talked about earlier in terms of like social and digital advertising. I saw the opportunity and, you know, was eventually able to like present that to senior leadership. But I think, you know, there's always a lot of space to hear new ideas. And I think that can mm. be like a scary thing when you're sort of a junior person, but to, yeah. you know, take a leadership stance and say, I see opportunity here and, and sort of present it, I think is something I wish I had known earlier on in my career. Mm. How would you, would you just, is your approach, would it be, because it's not now, obviously just like get your thesis on why you think it's going to work and you know, look like, just presented to to senior senior leadership or is it like a strategic way that you'd go go about it yeah i think i mean it could be formal but informal too you know just having yeah. engaging conversations like uh you know when you're just in conversations with people and you know talk to the senior people of the team about you know what you see emerging what you find interesting and and ways that can improve the business i think that's an even like mm great way to approach it as well and then you know if you get traction um you know put a, together that formal sort of piece but yeah i think yeah. there's like a lot of value to putting yourself out there a little bit and expressing ideas and pushing things a little bit when you see uh you know an opportunity for the business yeah i think, and I think it, like, it also it shows yeah okay I was just going to say like for overall career growth too, I think that a lot of like junior people and people that, you know, have worked for me on my teams and things like that. I've seen a lot of like early on, like this is my job description. This is my role. You know what I mean? I love the people that can like push that and, and take on new things and find new areas of opportunity. And I think like, don't be shy to, to really, you know, go out of your comfort zone and, and find those opportunities. The changes that you've seen, what would you say the biggest changes in the last five years within the digital marketing space have been? And then what are you predicting for some big changes in the next five years? Yeah, so I think the biggest change has to be around retail commerce and the way that people are shopping online, or just shopping in general now. And I mean, we know COVID was like a huge accelerant into sort of e-commerce and, and what it did there. It was already before COVID, um, you know, the emergence of Amazon and the role that plays. And Amazon has really changed the way we market as well, um, their platform and the abilities of, of their advertising and things that you can do on the platform, I think were really game changing and made everybody sort of step things up and and try and follow it and keep up with that pace um and i think that they're still you know always pushing things in terms of commerce but absolutely um the emergence of like retail commerce and how people shop and how we can reach them as marketers is definitely like the biggest area of change too you know it's and, and with COVID and not having as many out of home experiences, it's just really accelerated what's happening digital wise. So mm -hmm. I, I would definitely say that's been the biggest area of change for sure. What, what do you say? I mean, obviously everything's had to shift digital with due to COVID. What's one of the exciting ways or interesting ways that you've seen a company reach, reach uh, an e-commerce through e-commerce at recently? Yeah, I think there's, you know what, I think in, there's two different paths. I think there's some companies that have a really great offering that they can give on a direct to consumer platform, um, on Shopify, on things like that. And I think, you know, um, if you have something that's really unique, 
um, that gives people a reason to go to your website to make that unique purchase because that, that is a huge thing. You know, why am I going to go to an individual website to shop for different things? There has to be like yeah. a reason to believe a really strong reason to buy. And I think there's companies that do that, you know, really, really well and, and create that, you know, really great online experience that, that people want to go there and do that sort of um, individual type shop. And then I think, you know, on the other hand, there's companies that have really embraced the third party platforms like Amazon and grown so much and been so successful on those platforms as well. And, you know, they've done like some companies have done really unique things like have, you know, packs only that are for Amazon that are you, their best selling SKUs. And I think, you know, that's a really great approach to to a third party platform as well what's a trend that you're seeing within the digital space that really excites you at the moment? I think the emergence of social commerce is happening really fast. And I, I don't know what it's like where you are, but i um, you know, it's, it's going quickly in Europe and now in the U S it's not in Canada yet, but the ability to like shop right from your Instagram or Facebook page, you know, and have that direct, um, checkout experience on those platforms. I think, it, yeah, that's coming up pretty quick. And it's about making that frictionless commerce experience for people. So, you know, everyone, what's the hashtag like TikTok made me buy it or <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> if you have someone there that's like immediately excited and how you can get them to like have that impulse purchase online and directly, it, you know, is really exciting, I think, versus. What, the more steps you have to go through, the more you're thinking about, do I really need to buy this? Um, but yeah, to have it direct exactly. on your social feed and something you're interested in makes it super easy. And what do you think the implication of more social commerce is going to be? Is there any like second order things that you think are going to happen? Yeah, I think it's going to make competition even harder. Um, and advertising likely more expensive to go, you know, will will be harder to reach people and get people because you're working with those lower funnel metrics versus sort of awareness based campaigns as well. Um, and trying mm. to get conversion there. So I, I think we'll see some, you know, impact on our, our costs per, per impact go up. What's the biggest challenge you know there's so many things that are changing with digital marketers what's a big challenge that you see you see a lot of digital marketers getting it wrong i think when it comes to i think digital marketers in general are great at creating campaigns you know visually you know there's everyone's like really visually on top of it getting the right messaging across knowing what their targets are I would say things sort of uh, get lost in the data and analytics and measurement of performance. Um, and I think, you know, looking at it really high level is easy to say which ads are performing great, which are, you know, meeting the consumer's needs the best. And, and that's really great. But I think that something's lost when you take all the, like, there's so much data and analytics you can get out of ad performance that you're doing digitally. Um, and translating that into really great business decisions and taking it to that next step of, you know, really utilizing that information. And I think sometimes that takes, you know, teams that really understand how to like dig through data and find things, but it can really lead to a lot of growth and make those, you know, profound business decisions um, at the end of the day by, by utilizing the data in the best way possible. So any way you think we could, that, that problem could be solved? Uh, like any like shop gut decisions that you think that keep you up at night saying like, Yo, you could solve this or be better at it at least. I, I, I think in a lot of cases, it's sort of um, an executive senior management noticeability too, because I think digital marketers will report to senior level type management our campaign did great. We reached this many people, um, you know, so I think at like sort of an executive level to be asking the questions of the people that are running campaigns and doing the digital marketing, you know, what implications does this have for our business and starting to ask those questions and go down that path. Um, and then I think the other thing is 
sort of standardized measurement is lost uh, a lot of times as well, right? I think everybody reports on the metrics that look good and work for them instead of having, you know, some sort of standardization of success and, and what success looks like and means in like all different levels of the funnel there. With talent coming into the industry, uh, are you seeing any challenges with the talent um, that are coming in, gaps or talent in general is, is good coming into the industry? Yeah, I think overall, I'm, um, there's just like a maturity level in the industry that's not there in general in, in a lot of ways um with talent that can cover a really broad scope of things so i'm seeing specifically that you know people know how to do one thing it's sort of in digital marketing really well and that's resulted as a, a sort of like they've done it because of a business need they were put on like a, a special task you know to do it and that's how they've come across it um i think you know there's really few people coming to the table that are like really well trained developed, and have like a full scope of skills and abilities um and not just sort of like a one-off one-off type of skill so i i think that is hurting things right now for sure why do you think that people like very specialized people, you know, they lose out on, I mean, you're saying there's a gap there. What do you think the problem of being quite specialized in one specific thing actually is? Yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Um, I think it's having the like training overall on it. Like I said, like, you know what I mean? Maybe you've been brought onto a special project and suddenly you're an expert on it versus like somebody that's been really well round trained in digital marketing as a whole and, and can understand, you know, a bigger picture and overall scope and not just like some specific skills. What would you hope the, the DMAT actually achieves and, and, and the problem that it solves? Um, I think as someone who continually interviews and employs people, like I think to be able to pro give potential employees, you know, some sort of basis around the skill set that's required to to do a job. I think that that's so crucial because a lot of times it's such like a mystery and there is no sort of standardization. Um, and it's really hard to narrow in on whether people, you know, are, are able to do a job and the skills that are needed or not. Um, so I, I think that's one part of it. And I think for companies to be able to hire talent as well when they're not in the know of what's needed to do the job, I think that that's, you know, really critical too and can provide some like really great guidance there. Um, because I see that happen a lot. Like I have a lot of people come to me and they're like, hey, we want to hire a digital marketing person. What does that <laughs> need to look like? Mm -hmm. um, they just don't know, right? So I, I think yeah. it'll be really great that way too. On the on the first part that you, and thank you for the, for the insights. On the first part that you said about, you know, helping understand, uh, you know, the gaps in talent, essentially. Is that how you say we bring, when bringing them in and making sure that when you're bringing them in that you, kind of assessing them before or once they're actually in the organization that you can see where those gaps are to kind of make sure that you're filling those gaps and you know training them in, this, in essence which both. which side Absolutely is it both. Both. Yeah. and i think for people within organizations too that you know might be working on some sort of special project and things like that and want to pursue things like for maybe them to like work in this process and identify like areas they could be trained into to like build their skill set would be really beneficial as well. What's one problem and this is it, what's one problem you'd like to to solve within within digital? I mean we spoke about measurement, but what's one pro or, or actually within within an organization? I mean you you within a a big organization, what's a problem that you would like to see solved? Um, yeah, so measurement of being able to use that data, like in a bigger way, um, to make those for sure has to be number one. Um, I think it, I've worked in, you know, a lot of large CPGs and just, um, 
the willingness to try new things, um, do test and learns, uh, explore new options. I think, you know, that's how you're going to be really like leading edge. And I think that that's missed out on a lot because there is a lot of the approach. Well, we've always done it this way and it works okay for us. So why change? Um, yeah. you know, so I think the openness to exploring new paths and trying new things is, is a really big struggle for sure.